we're talking about uh, how marketing can be involved in, the qual in quality for manufacturers, for IT people, and for people in advertising businesses such as myself. So uh, I want to look at marketing from a very broad perspective. Now, when we think about marketing, what do we think of? Anybody? What, what's an, a, a word or, or, or a sentence? Sales. Okay, great. What else? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. Okay. <laughs> Commercials, I guess. Right? Promote. Promote. Great. Okay. Um, I'm going to suggest, and this is my premise, by knowing ourselves, our businesses, our customers, our clients, our industries, all of which I would suggest to you is marketing. We can better serve them. We can better communicate our products, uh, about our products and our services, and thereby serve our consumers better. And we'll come back to that and you'll see what I mean. Okay, so marketing, according to uh, Webster's Dictionary, is first the act or process of selling or purchasing in a market. Now that sounds a little bit like what, what you guys suggested. Um, so we have selling here, uh, but purchasing in a market. Not exactly, uh, maybe a little bit different. And B, the process or technique of promoting, selling, and distributing a product or service. Now that, I think, is commonly what comes to mind. Promoting, selling, maybe advertising, hmm, but distributing, not distributing. What's that got to do with marketing? And two, and this is really what I want to focus on, an aggregate of functions, a whole bunch of stuff involved in moving goods from producer to consumer. That's pretty close to your whole supply chain. Okay. All has to do with marketing, um, except maybe gathering uh, materials. But even that, I think, involves marketing when we broaden our scope, which is what I'm suggesting here. Anybody know this book, The Power of Positive Thinking? Yes. Has anybody read it? Yes. Okay. One of my favorite books of all time. Okay? Whatever you might think of it. Um, I also would say that it's one of the greatest pieces of marketing of all time. Of the kind of marketing that I want to talk about. Why? Well, if this book were written today, and this is just my own opinion, it would have a different title. Possibly spiritual principles in business or maybe even religious concepts brought to bear in uh, the marketplace or in the, your day-to-day -day life, okay? Um, certainly the way the publishing industry is today, it would have been put in a niche on a shelf over there, okay? But it's front and center, and it's one of the most popular books of all time, after the Bible, maybe, uh, and Dale Carnegie's stuff, right? Um, why? because Reverend Peel included all of us. Whatever you believe, whatever your spirituality, whatever your religion, it's for everybody. The power, and what is he selling? The power of positive thinking. He's not selling chapter X of the New Testament, which is what he talks about in some of the book. Whatever you may think about that. The power of positive thinking. I was very surprised when I read the book, but I kept reading, and I'm glad I did. Um, okay, let's stay there. I don't know how you went backwards. I haven't figured out how to go backwards. Um, and by the way, we're taping this as sort of an experiment to see uh, what it might be like to put videos, um, I run a company that does, among other things, professional video, on our website so that if you're on the other side of the country or you're not here, you can see um, ASQ TV. Uh, so marketing begins with, I would suggest, what we're selling. What Reverend Peel was selling was uh, an idea. The power of positive. Wasn't even selling a book. The power of positive thinking. Okay. Uh, in the case of transportation, a hundred years ago, or maybe more like a hundred and fifty years ago or so, we'd be selling a horse and buggy. What's involved there? How do you sell that? You've got to know about horses. You've got to know about, I guess, buggies. 
You know, where do you get your raw materials? How do you sell? Where do you go to sell? How do you talk to people? Who needs this? And why? Why are you coming up with the product or service that you're coming up with? And how was that product or service yesterday? And what's it like tomorrow? And I, I, I'm, I'm talking about this so that I think it can be helpful when we're thinking about our own industries and our own products, including for those of us who aren't in marketing and who might be in, say, quality control or IT, okay, as I know many of us in, in ASQ uh, might be. Next. Okay, so how do we sell that product? Earlier transportation, I could have gone back to the caveman rolling a rock. You know, how does he sell that? Who's it for? Who needs that rock? Uh, what's the market? What's the market for it? Another thing to think about. How have the markets changed for different things? To who are we selling to? And how do you communicate and deliver that? Whatever it is. All marketing, not just selling, not just advertising, but real substance of what, what it is we're doing and selling. So here we are 50 years ago, selling something looking a little different. We have to know that teenagers are going to drive-in theaters. This is when I was, you know, this is the 60s. So this is kind of my time. Uh, what do I want the car for? Who, who's, how do you talk to a guy who's, who is buying a car? Where do you sell the car? Where do you get the raw material? Very different, you know, and what's the concept behind all this? Anybody watch Mad Men TV show? Anybody? Yeah, well, I, I do. I'm in advertising, so I like, I like the show. And, and I've been in the field for, for almost 30 years, so I like to see what it was like and how these guys thought in commute, because it's really advertising about communicating. Communicating, putting an idea from here in communicating directly to you. And, and really, if you're honest about it, it's about helping. We're all in the business of helping someone somewhere with something. We're really genuinely trying to help people like people. Okay, so let's think about your industries. So I come from a family of teachers, and um, I have some idea of how education has changed. And uh, I know that, you know, we're talking about having a SWOT analysis at the next meeting, right? So we all know what, what strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are, okay? So there's something, uh, when I went to school, that was called the STEEP analysis, <coughs> that had to do with what is the sociological climate around a product. Okay, at any given time. What is uh, the technology climate around the product or service at any given time? How is how it's delivered? Education is undergoing changes, maybe not at every facility, but people are doing some of it online. Good, bad, I don't know, I don't want to get into that conversation. But technology has affected it. Sociological climate has affected it. Politics, which is the end of steep, has affected it. Okay. So think about your industries. Manufacturing industry has been tremendously affected by social climate, politics, and so forth, whether it's politics here or somewhere else. All part of marketing. So think about how your product has changed. I, I'm curious, are, are most of you in manufacturing? Who's in, 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 in manufacturing a product? Okay. Okay. I know nothing about what you guys do. What about um, IT? IT? Okay, a lot of hands I'm not seeing. So what do some of the rest of you do? Education. Okay, so we're talking about education. Think about how these things uh, affect, affect your businesses and your fields and the climate in your, your industry and thinking globally. Okay? Um, and consider speaking with someone who's outside your industry. It was very helpful to me to speak to people outside of my industry so that I, I'm looking at my industry like this and my clients like this. So to be able to step back and to uh, get some perspective is something I found very helpful in serving my clients better. Um, next. Okay. We had a new client at my company, eFace Media, that sold walk-in bathtubs. High ticket item. $10,000, $15,000, um, and they had us come in, 
uh, they were just forming this company. It was right around here. It was in Farmingdale. Okay? And they talked about tubs. They talked about making tubs, getting them in from China, what their competition is doing, the advertising, how their competition is terrible, what about faucets. I have a very different perspective on walk-in tubs. My father, who's 88, had polio when he was two. Okay? He can't take a bath because he can't get out of the tub. Okay? So I had a very different perspective on a walk-in tub, which you don't have to lie down on the floor and you can sit at like a chair like this and then it locks you in. Okay? So I brought a different perspective to them, which turned out to be really good for me and good for them too. Next. So what followed was discussion about the senior customer and his family who might be doing the buying for him. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of business uh, and, and focus on elder care and senior care nowadays, as there should be as we baby boomers get older. Um, it's a big, big market and it's a big concern. And that was really the, uh, the point of view that we had. And what followed was, this is a part of an ad from uh, in the New York Times that we created for them called the Safer Bathing Experience. And we rebranded re as Safer Bathing, which spoke to the older citizens' concern and their children who might be the ones who are helping them to make the purchase and doing the research for that. Okay, and we ended up doing uh, branding, which is what this really was. It's a part of, a part of marketing. Uh, brochures, a website, ads, and TV commercials. Uh, but it all changed, it all started with a change in marketing and a change in thinking and how we perceive of the product and, and, and service. So that's really what I want to talk about and get you guys thinking, if you don't know already, about changes in your, uh, in the climate, in, in your industries and in your jobs and um, how that affects you and that even things that can be challenging, you can make lemonade. There are ways of making lemonade. It takes a little while, you know, after we get over the initial shock of, oh my God, they're teaching online, what are we going to do? There are things that, there are things that we can do or, and address it to put these, the technology to use and to improve our product or service. Go ahead. So marketing is the overall way the product is brought to market and branding, as I alluded to, is the specific way the product or service is discussed or depicted or talked about. Um, Next, I've kind of covered this. Uh, food, uh, just one other example, is marketed and branded in a whole bunch of ways. So, uh, next. Food in the past, fast food. Um, here are some logos of some fast food companies, uh, many of which are still around or are from other areas. And if you add in some new and recent concepts, we have, next, the notion that uh, Fast food isn't, isn't healthy, or might not be the healthiest choice. So that's how a, a great example of how in recent years, trends in perceptions, trends in lifestyles have affected a market, an entire market. And, and we have probably our biggest client is a national um, whole, whole, uh, wholesaler of uh, food packaging. Okay. And the fact that you have two income homes, for instance, has caused a great deal of change in uh, the way people eat at night. Because you have two parents, they got to eat on the go, they've got to get dinners ready for the kids faster, and um, they have to have more ready-made dinners. But along with that has come a trend for being healthier. So you have a company like Campbell's Foods, tremendous company. They bought Swanson, very big company and they've introduced lines of easy, quick and easy to serve, but healthy, full-bodied soups, for instance, as a result of examining that trend. And that's a way that you can have measurable, okay, measurable uh, and quality-oriented, at least from my perspective of quality, uh, response to changes in the market, okay, in a positive way. Next. So marketing changes with the times, and we have to kind of keep track of uh, who, are, who is our best customer, what are his habits or her habits and perceptions, what's going on in society, and how has that affected us, um, and how, what is our competition doing, okay? I worked in the city for uh, ad agencies, for actually companies that produce the graphics for ad agencies, for Revlon and, and BMW and people like that in the 80s. One invention 
completely wiped out all the companies, the unions that we were in, everything. And led to me having my own business doing this, which I started in 89. Anybody know what that invention was? Apple computer. The Apple computer. Complete. I asked my boss in 1988, can I, get, can I try that? Can I learn how to use that? He said, if you want to learn that, you go buy one. I did. I started doing pizza menus. And they're gone. All of those companies, they were absorbed by ad agencies that are doing the work in-house now. But it changed everything. One, technology. So we, it's important for us to pay attention to technology, even though it might be scary. It can, it can work out. It can work out. OK. Advertising and other marketing ve vehicles, I would say that they're all good. They're all good, but we have to figure out what's right for us. And how are we perceived by our, uh, by our best potential customers? OK. Okay, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, something Kelvin had uh, brought up, and we've talked about it in some of our meetings, and that's some new media, okay? And so I'm going to go quickly through uh, the first of, of these. Go ahead. So websites, they're not so new. 95, 93, something like that, they came out. Uh, but they've changed. There are good things. There are not so good things. You can level the playing field. You know, Joe's soda can kind of look like Coca-Cola in some ways, whereas 25 years ago, Joe's soda wasn't coming up with his own TV commercial. You know, he wasn't getting the deal to sell at Yankee Stadium. He might be, he might not be now, but it can level the playing field a little bit. Um, what's not so good about websites? Anybody have a negative? Well, next, we'll get to it. Let's talk about some ways they've changed, and that'll lead to something negative. Next. So a way that they're negative, some people think it's negative that they know more about us. They follow our habits. I was caught in the flood in, in uh, Sandy and um, was looking for furniture online after the, after the storm. So I'm looking at Raymore and Flanagan, and I'm looking at Bob's. And then I went to read the New York Times, and what comes up there? Ads for sofas. So it's following my behavior around. Some people think that's kind of creepy. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot more images. There's a lot less reading. People don't like to read. There's a lot more video. They are more responsive. They are much more interactive. They're very specialized. If you want to build one, you can get one for almost nothing and build your own website, but if you want something that does more, um, it can get expensive. You need programmers and that sort of thing. Okay. How they're seen, just let me kind of go through this quickly. Uh, search engine optimization is, next please. Okay, this is a Google search screen. Um, how do you know, how many people know uh, here what AdWords is? Or pay-per-click? Okay, not a lot of people. Two people. Okay, so this is a search screen, searching for plumbers in Nassau County, okay? You can't really see it up here, but there's a shaded area that the screen is too bright to really see. But there's a slightly yellowed area of these first three or four listings. And there's a tiny three-letter word up here, ads. These are paid. These, same thing, ads, these are paid. And the way that they're paid is there's an auction taking place all the time. It's called AdWords. It's a Google product. You have access to it for free if you have a Gmail account. And any, you can have 10 Gmail accounts, 50 Gmail accounts. Um, and the way that works, it's pay per click. So if someone says, we can have your website number one in Google, true. It's very true, but this is what they're talking about. You have to bid to the top. So let's say the bid, the bid just to give you a quick example, is um, $2 to be number one. Okay? And let's say your budget is $10 a day. That would be $300 a month. Okay? And you're here. You, you've gotten in there at your $2 bid. Someone clicks on this, or five people click on it, not one person, five times. That, that's another issue. But five people click on that. That's $10. Your ad disappears. Your ad's gone. So it can get expensive. And 
have to track what the costs are and so forth. This area, this main large body, which extends all the way down, is organic search. And what that is, is um, how friendly, essentially how friendly is your site to Google. And it's more or less permanent. The problem is you can it's not ethical to guarantee that you'll be number one because if some we, we do this at our company. So if there's ten spots on the home page and eleven people hire guys like me who are all pretty good at this, someone's not gonna make it. That's just how it is. There's only ten spots. So to promise that you're gonna be there, not right, not ethical. Uh, it also takes a while to get there. It's also challenging and complicated, and a lot of it involves both what's on your site, but also incoming links. I don't want to get too into this, but um, how many sites out there are linking to us? And so what we do is we have people who are out there linking sites to us all the time. Link building. That's what link building is, and it's endemic to social uh, uh, search engine optimization, SEO. Um, there's also something called Google Maps, which is geographic based, which is also free. And that's here, and, and sometimes you'll see a map next to it, and that's what this is. So for a plumber, it's a good thing. You know, you might not need the rest. On the other hand, you might. Social media. Very simple, quick overview that I hope will be somewhat useful to you. It's become, like everything else, very, very specialized, and there's a lot going on, and it can just make your head spin, right? Make my head spin, and it's what I do. Next. Okay, this is uh, my eFace company's Facebook page. And what I want to point out here is that you can search out businesses and groups that are in your uh, sphere of influence that are manufacturers of widgets, for instance, or um, you know, teachers in Nassau County. Okay? And you can notify others that you're friends with or that you're not friends with, with an at symbol. If you put an at symbol uh, in front of, say, in a business, this, by the way, this is a business page. There are personal pages and there are business pages. So, in this is a business page, and if I am on my business page and I put an at symbol, at Long Island ASQ, if that's actually the name of the page, whoever runs the Long Island ASQ page will get a notification saying, Dave is talking about you. Dave said something about you or put a, a picture that tagged you. Tagged is really the term. Okay. So you can notify people and contact people and network with people online. Next, please. Okay, how do you determine ROI? Facebook has something called Insights, and it's essentially an analytic. Okay. Down here are our posts, and the size of the dot is how many people saw it. Okay. Above this in green is how many people are talking about it. People who said, yeah, I like that, or that's no good, or just hit like. Okay. And above it here are our total reach. In other words, if I put up something about, check out my talk at ASQ, and Kelvin goes on and says, yeah, that, was, that wasn't bad, but really dropped the ball with the technology. And then Mary Ellen sees that. That's this. How did Mary, people like Mary Ellen see it? Third party. <clears throat> what is your reach? Next. Twitter. Really quick. Very similar to Facebook. 140 character limit, although it's not really the case. You have more, but it'll cut off what you see. Uh, and again, with at, you can connect with other people and connect with people of similar interest. And what you can do is there's a search field here that I grayed out uh, where you can put at ASQ or at manufacturing or at widget makers and just see what's on there. And you can connect with those people with the at. The hashtag or the number sign is a trending topic. So I can say, Hashtag Dave's ASQ talk, and then anybody out there who's interested in my ASQ talk can search that. It becomes a searchable, um, it becomes a searchable term with the hashtag. Next, 
And then LinkedIn, which I, I think is just the absolute best thing for people like me, and it can be, I think, for, pe for all of us, um, because it enables us to really directly connect with professionals. Twitter and Facebook have every nincompoop out there who wants to say something about anything, uh, talking about them. LinkedIn is really for business. This is a LinkedIn home page. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. This is my bio, so you can look at people's bios. You can also see who looked at your bio. Very useful, very useful. Next, and what I think is terrific in LinkedIn is that you have groups for people who are manufacturing widgets, okay? So you can join the widget manufacturing group and say, you know what? We have an issue with our manufacturing supply line. You know, we have a problem in that we uh, waste a lot of power, or we waste a lot of time. What do you guys think? And so it's almost like having a little trade organization that you can um, ask questions of or be part of, or you can go and post your, whatever you have to say, your ideas, and if you do that enough, you become known as an influencer. Over here, actually it's down here somewhere, uh, and it's not on the screen, is uh, a list of the top three or four influencers in the groups. And um, that perception, you know, much of marketing is about perception. Um, you can also ask experts questions. Um, and if we can go to the next screen, probably my favorite thing about LinkedIn is that you have this wonderful advanced search capability. Um, now, I bought a slightly higher membership than the, well, it's higher than the free membership. Uh, it's not as high as some other memberships. I don't remember what it is. It's not, it's a two digit number a month. I don't know I remember quite what it is. But it enables you to do wonderful advanced searches of everybody on LinkedIn. And you can search by industry. If I want to talk to marketing directors at hospitals, which I do, um, I can do that. If I want to talk to marketing directors at hospitals of over 500 employees in the New York metro area, I can click that and I can get a list of that. And the best thing, get past the gatekeeper. I can talk directly to the person. And for those of you who that the marketing aspect or the advertising or sales aspect isn't as important, fine technology people. You can ask, you can find colleagues elsewhere, and you can directly connect to them. And you don't have to worry about who's answering the phone. Of course, they do have to operate their own LinkedIn accounts. But uh, you can get access, and um, I found it to be tremendously useful. And, and I find that most people do operate their own LinkedIn accounts. Next. And finally, ROI. How do you measure return on investment. First of all, calculate what it costs to build a widget and figure out your expenses and you can figure out what your ROI is, obviously. Um, but kind of the granddaddy of free analytics is Google Analytics, which comes again free with a Gmail account. And what that is, is you put a little code or your web developer um, can put a little code in your website and it will tell you in very um, uh, you, you can look at it a lot of different ways. It'll, it'll give you charts and graphics and all kinds of great things that tell you who's been to your website, how long they've stayed, what pages they've gone to, have they clicked to buy if you're selling, uh, what's their behavior like, where did they come from, what did they search to get there, and it's all free. Okay. Now you can buy enterprise tools that do more, um, but you don't have to. Google Analytics is pretty cool. Does a lot. So, back to our original premise. If we know ourselves, and we know our businesses, and we know uh, what's going on within our companies, and we know the climate outside our companies, and within our industry, but also in society, uh, the best we can. That's really marketing. True marketing. Not just sales or advertising that can uh, really add quality and value to our businesses and, and the way we serve our customers 